Hi, in this video, we're gonna go behind the scenes on a spy thriller using the Canon C500 Mark II. I'd written five short scenes that I wanted to shoot in the space of one afternoon and evening in New York City. To move quickly, I decided to shoot shoulder mounted and use largely available light, but at the right time of day. So I could shape the light and use the C500's latitude to get a ton of great shots really quickly while still maintaining a cinematic look. I wanted to do the classic spy meeting on the park bench and thought this location in Highbridge would really work. What I didn't count on was that it was a very windy day. The sun kept coming out and going beneath clouds where one side of the coverage was diffused light and it wouldn't match the other with bright light. To work around this, I had the PA hold a small flag that we brought along to give a softer light during the bright sun areas and we used this 60 watt portable LED as a backlight when it was overcast to help bridge the distance between the two shots. The amazing dynamic range of the C500 Mark II sensor also helped a lot. So even when there were big changes in exposure during the shot, I could compensate for this in the grade because the information was all there. It was also very easy to drop in different levels of ND between takes and hold our T1.5 aperture on the Sumire Primes. The wind was a big challenge and a couple of times we actually had to hold for a particularly strong gust that made it look like we were shooting in the middle of a storm. But the funny thing about being on set, especially when you're the writer, director, producer, cinematographer, as I was here, is that any delay feels like a crisis. In reality, we had only a page of dialogue to shoot, which is less than a minute. And we were done with the storyboards that I actually planned in under 20 minutes. If the actors are rehearsed and you're moving like this, shooting handheld or shooting shoulder mounted, you can get a lot done really, really quickly. Because I had the time, I started looking for other setups like this high angle on the stairs of the pool behind them. We even tried a couple of takes of a walking shot with the inbuilt digital stabilization and a low angle shot with this reflection, even though it was crossing the line. I feel like that if you have time and you're already there, you may as well try something new. Most of the time it won't make it into the edit, but occasionally it comes out as a really critical shot and lets you experiment with some new methods of working. We had about an hour to wait between the scene in the heights and the sunset. So we shot this interior in the apartment that we were using as base camp. I'd found an old microfilm viewer for less than $100 and it made a great prop for a retro spy thriller. We shot these handheld except for the reverse where I augmented the bulb of the microfilm viewer with an LED tube of the same color. I used the 50 millimeter Sumi Ray for all of these macro shots and the long focus throw allowed us to really dial in what we wanted the viewer to see when. Our next setup was another dialogue scene, this time by the river of the setting sun. This is the kind of thing that's hard to fake, but not impossible. We arrive with the last rays of the sun. Uh, we're streaming through these amazing stairs, giving a really striking geometric pattern effect. And I knew I wanted to do some action. So I had the actors run down the ramp. I did the first take catching them running, opening up to a T56 for a deeper depth of field. For the second take, actually shot running with them. There's a low bungee attachment for this uh, shoulder support rig that lets you support a larger rig like this one more comfortably and further stabilizes the shot. Between this and the C500 Mark II's inbuilt digital stabilization, it worked out great and we're able to get a couple of seconds for the trailer. Our crew was myself, a focus puller, a PA and our BTS cameraman. With the actor that made six of us. This can be a little tricky in New York City because you can't get everyone into one cab, but with the larger rideshare option, we were able to go from location to location pretty easily. The focus puller couldn't follow me down the ramp, there wasn't room, so we just left the focus at eight feet and I tried to keep that eight feet distance between myself and the actors as we moved. We did do a dialogue scene under the bridge and I used a near side key to make things a little off-putting and also so I could capture this structural detail of the bridge. For the other actor's reverse, I cheated him around uh, so we could see the water and it had this great darkness to him. Shooting in C-Log 2, even though we were around 30 IRA to hold the exposure of the sky, there was still plenty of color information. It makes for a great shot. The sunset as we were traveling to the next location, one of the final remaining phone booths in New York City. Unfortunately, it was broken. So we used the same LED 
to push light into the lamp cover and to illuminate the inside and give the character this uh, amazing glow. I did a regular single on the 50 millimeter and then changed to the 135 millimeter for this very extreme close up with beautiful diffuse bokeh in the background. Not bringing in a ton of extra light allowed us to hold detail in the street behind him and get this wonderful atmosphere. I also used the technique of punching in on the C500 Mark II sensor, going from full frame down to 35 millimeter, which allows you to get a whole nother shot without changing lenses, which when you're on the street, you don't have anywhere clean to put the camera down, you have to do it while you're holding it, can be a little bit tricky. On a scene like this, I always want to shoot a potential cutaway so that in the edit, you can add a line or smooth over something. I got this wide establishing shot uh, with a nice bit of movement in it. I also grabbed the entrance to the phone booth and some close-ups of the phone because you never know when you'll need these in the cut. I really love shooting on location like this in these great spaces with largely practical lighting. You can shoot 360 degrees, you can move fast, you can get a ton of options, and you can find something on set that really works for you. For the final scene, I had found this street near the phone booth that looked almost like a set. It had bright lights on the corner, so I wanted to do a quick uh, moving shot with just the lights of the city. We did four or five shots from a classical following pursuit scene, all handheld, and the smoothness of the shots, which was a combination of the weight of the camera rig and the digital stabilization really won out. We were shooting uh, the Sumi rays wide open at T1.3 and it gave plenty of exposure just in practical streetlights at ISO 800. I was really happy with the outcome. We were able to get hundreds of shots in just four or five hours and really start to put together a story. We we're able to move fast but not have to compromise on quality using all the great features the Canon C500 Mark II and the Sumi Ray Primes, like inbuilt ND, internal stabilization, XFAVC, with a really minimal crew and a prepared cast, you can shoot very quickly and not compromise on quality. And here is the result. I want out. There's nowhere you can go. I don't know anything. They'll still kill you, just to make sure. How long do I have? If you're still alive, the potential benefit outweighs the risk of investigation. Spare me the outrage. I'll do what you always do. Cut a deal to get what you want and back up before the blood is 